another big story this evening, and that is major airlines now ramping up enforcement of new rules requiring passengers to wear face coverings on planes. Our Phil LeBeau live in Chicago this evening with the very latest. Phil, what's the story? Scott, those are rules that the airlines set in place, most of them anywhere from three to four weeks ago. And the overwhelming majority of passengers do wear masks, both in the airport and on planes. But increasingly, there are complaints that some passengers have said, you know what, I'm not going to wear it when I'm in the middle of a flight, even though it's required by the airline. So what you have right now are the airlines putting more pressure on the passengers to wear face masks. They're just not putting pressure. They're outright requiring it. The crews say, again, the vast majority of the passengers are wearing the mask. So here's what's going on. You have to wear your mask, ticketing, boarding, in-flight, basically from the minute you get to the airport to the minute you leave the airport. Noncompliance is reported internally. So if you're on a flight and you decide you're not going to wear it, they're going to tell the home office, and the next time you try to book a ticket, you're probably on the restricted travel list, which means you won't be able to fly. Now, most airports around the United States States, they are asking passengers to wear those masks. Though we have talked to the people who have been at major airports, whether it's O'Hare, LaGuardia, et cetera, and they say, look, there's probably about 10% of the people walking around in the airport who are not wearing masks right now. All of this comes as more people are flying. As you take a look at the airline index, the number of passengers this last week, 3.1 million. That's an increase of 24.7% compared to last week. Finally, take a look at shares of American and United. We could really put any of the airlines up here. It's been a very turbulent uh, month, to say the least, for these guys. But all of them now, Scott, are saying we are requiring masks when you come on board. The bigger issue that these airlines are facing, what passengers will see when they fly, when they land and they get to the gate, people aren't practicing social distancing. It's just like before. Get up and get out of that plane and everybody goes into the aisle. Phil, they, the airlines say they're requiring it. What happens if passengers don't comply? Well, you won't get on the flight, first of all. E almost every airline is saying you have to have it when you're boarding the flight. So, A, when you go through ticketing, you should, you should, almost all of them require it. They all are requiring it when you're boarding. And then let's say you wear it and then you get on board and you're like, yeah, you know what, this is for the birds. They will say something. And they will probably ask you two or three times. If you refuse to do it, they're not going to sit there and fight you on this. They'll simply phone it into the home office, and the next time you go to book a ticket, they may say, you know what, Scott? You are not following the rules, so you're not able to book that ticket. That's interesting. Phil, thank you for the very latest. Phil LeBeau from Chicago Forest covering the airlines. Let's talk more about these policies. Dr. James Merlino is the chief clinical transformation officer at the Cleveland Clinic. He's helping advise United Airlines with their policies. Sarah Nelson is international president of the Association of Flight Attendants. Good to have you with us. Sarah, I begin with you. What do you think of these policies? Are these good for flight attendants? These policies are absolutely good for flight attendants. We need to have everyone wearing masks. As we know, uh, this is an issue where if we're all doing it, we're all safer. And so we need to be very clear with the traveling public about this. What is concerning to us is that this has not come from a government initiative because it would be much more effective if this were a government regulation, like we saw after 9-11. There were safety parameters put into place right after 9-11 to address the traveling public's concerns around security and safety following those events. In this case, we need to do the exact same. And if we are communicating from the government and from the industry as well, then that gives the people on the front lines a lot more backing to be able to make sure that this is implemented correctly and that it's not being put on our backs to be the enforcers. Yeah. Dr. Merlino, how did you advise United? What did you tell them? We told them that absolutely wearing masks uh, for the passengers was the right thing to do. Look, masks protect us from each other, and we cover everybody up with a mask. We greatly reduce the potential spread of the COVID virus if people are shedding it. So this is about really creating an environment where we're decreasing the spread in a very confined space where we have difficulty with social distancing, which obviously you can't do on an airplane. What about, Dr. Merlino, the lack of, say, a unified policy, if you will, the kind that Sarah brings up? Well, I applaud the airlines for taking the action to require it because, as Phil said earlier, the vast majority of people are wearing masks, but we really need to up the enforcement because everybody needs to comply. And I think it's absolutely the right thing to do. Sarah, we've come a long way uh, in the last few months from almost nobody flying at all. Now you're seeing, as Phil just told us, um, added flights, a larger number of passengers. Can you take us into the mindset right now of the flight attendant on the plane and what they're thinking about, how they're feeling themselves? 
Well, this is a very uncertain time. We're concerned about our safety and health, of course, and we know that we're uh, putting ourselves at risk every time we come to work. These policies are giving us uh, a lot more confidence. And what we're concerned about now is that we need to make sure that the traveling public is clear about these policies so that everyone gets used to a new way of flying and has confidence in buying those tickets again. And frankly, that we are putting in place policies across uh, the board through the federal government uh, to make sure that people are staying in their jobs, that we're addressing these unemployment numbers. We're concerned about an economy that doesn't support an airline industry as well. So <laughs> we're concerned across the board. It starts with safety and security so that people understand that there's a confidence in buying an airplane ticket, but then we also need the means for people to be able to buy those tickets too. Dr. Molino, it's an interesting question. Of all the safety precautions that one can take in getting on an airplane, I can't forget the story of the a doctor who worked for NBC here in New York who got the virus even though he said he followed all the precautions when he had to take a flight. Granted, this was maybe six or so weeks ago. He said he wore a mask and yet he still caught the virus. What does that say about the safety of flying even with the precautions? Yeah, I think it's safe to fly right now, Scott, and I think it's important for people to follow the precautions because that will protect them. One thing that we learn by taking care of patients with COVID in hospitals is that we know how to keep caregivers and patients and visitors safe. And if we put together the right standards, we will protect people. You know, it's interesting because when you look across the country, flying was definitely down as a result of COVID, but there was still a lot of flying. There were still people on airplanes. We didn't have the safety precautions and we haven't read about stories where clustering occurred on an airplane. So I think that most of the spread with COVID right now is happening out in the community. There's no direct evidence that people are getting infected by airplanes. I think if we put the safety precautions in place and people follow them, and as Sarah noted, this is the new normal. We are now living in an environment with COVID until there is a treatment or until there's a vaccine. And it's incumbent on all of us to work together to follow the rules so that we're protecting each other. We know how to do this. If people follow the rules, if they wear masks, if they keep their hands clean, uh, we can protect people. Dr. Merlino, appreciate the time. Sarah Nelson as well will be following this developing story. My thanks to you both tonight. Let's bring in